You have to brainwash your mind for superior gains. See, it's not about being delusional or setting unrealistic expectations. It's about undoing the negative thinking that's been holding you back for all these years. Because the truth is, you have always, since the very start, been capable of more. Regardless of your genetics, we all have untapped potential that needs to be realized. And those who get to that point are the ones that have the right mentality. Because what this is, is a game of longevity. Who is willing to stay consistent for a decade or more? Learning about optimal programming. Never giving up when things get tough. That is what separates the winners from the losers. So once you accept that this is what it is, the journey gets excited. Because now you're not worried about the win factor. It simply is a matter of time. But anyway, I'm repeating what I said in past videos. Right now, I want to dive more into the psychology that goes into you getting elite numbers or having the best body of which you're capable of. The brainwashing effect. Okay, I'd like to talk about myself for a bit and use that to go back to you. When I started training, I was 120 pounds, an absolute twig. You look at that guy, no way are you thinking, oh fuck, he has a potential to bench 4 or 5. Imagine how many would quit in those exact shoes, even though they might have had similar genetics to me or slightly better in some cases. I'm not a freak, contrary to what some people have said. I may be above average in some respects, but overall, I'm no Larry Wheels. I'm no elite powerlifter. I'm just a regular dude who worked his fucking ass off and constantly upped his knowledge because knowledge literally is power in this case. You can overcome plateaus that have been there for years just by switching up the system. Hiring a strength coach, looking at the best of the best, as well as history. So we can't just look at the starting point element. Give yourself at least three to five years, build that base, and then we can start talking about more realistic standards. And I know that in my case, when I got to a 350 bench, that's when I really started thinking about benching 405. Because I thought to myself, what's 55 pounds more? And then I broke it down in my head. Okay, if I'm adding five pounds a year, worst case scenario, how many years would it take me to get four plates? Surely by my 30s, it would get done. And look at that. Ended up mathing out faster than I thought. So I actually lowballed it in this case and still got the end result. That's why it doesn't matter about when it's going to happen. You just have to stay on course for long enough. And eventually, things that otherwise were not seen before will start to get revealed. It's like when you get a new car. All of a sudden, you see everyone else driving that exact same car. From the model to the color. And you're like, what the fuck? The unseen has finally become seen. And the only way you're going to get to that point is by remaining consistent. So that's the first step in upgrading your mentality. Don't even worry about the outcome. You need to have a 100% stoic mindset. Fuck the results. Secondly, you need to look at what history has taught us on a global scale. And what I can say, if I go back to the 4 or 5 bench example, is that this was already done in the 1950s and 60s. Decades ago, we had real naturals pulling it off, some of which had worse leverages than me. So when I looked at these dudes, I was like, why the fuck can I get it? Then you hear about overhead press competitions, guys weighing 165 pounds doing two plates over their heads. This was done in the mid 1900s. And we got guys in 2021 saying, oh, that's impossible. Bullshit, motherfucker, you haven't looked at your history. So we actually have a lot of data that isn't scientific, but it goes way back. We can see what the greats did. And it lines up perfectly with some of what the real naturals are doing today. So you need to be aware of that too. This is significant for one major reason. You start to believe in the possibility of hitting it yourself. It's like the four minute mile. Classic cheesy example, but how true is it? Everyone thought it couldn't be done until a guy did it. Next thing you know, everyone was getting it. Now, it's not even seen as this crazy thing anymore. Whereas in the past, you would have been looked at as a fucking god. I see the same way with a lot of these elite numbers we see. I remember when Scott Herman first did a 500-pound conventional deadlift. The fitness community was freaking the fuck out. Most of you weren't there back then. I was. I saw the reactions. Insane. I would see people in real life talking about this. Even go back to the comment section. Dude, you're a beast. You're insane. Like... A 500 deadlift. How many guys are hitting that now? Look up 500 deadlift on uh, the YouTube search bar. It's so common that you wouldn't even get a lot of followers for doing that. 
no one's calling you a crazy beast. They might say that out of respect, but then you see a guy doing way more. Let's be realistic. What about Johnny Candido? I still think that the numbers he produced back then are out of this world. I am very impressed by that. But because powerlifting has grown since then, we now have higher standards. And although that has to do with more freaks getting into the sport, so a larger sample size, as well as um, more druggies as a whole, that doesn't take away from the fact that there are people who are hitting his numbers back then, which were deemed as super elite on a rather consistent basis. What about a 315 bench? If you did that in the old YouTube fitness, you'd be getting fake natty videos made about you. But now we know that, yeah, it's advanced, but it's not elite. And if you go compete in a meet, you'll see a lot of guys going well above that without steroids. And no, they aren't freaks. You have people with horrible leverages on the bench that have exceeded that as lifetime naturals. And it probably takes less time than you think. So all these standards we used to think were next level are now like, okay, a stepping stone. And that's because of the collective mentality being upgraded. I want you the same for you. When enough people start to think like this, that's when change occurs on a global scale to which basic standards go up a notch, which is a beautiful thing. That's what should be happening. Not that we're getting more black pilled as the years go by. It should always be elevation. So what can we do to further assist in that? One of my favorite techniques is listening to audio either during your workouts, on the way to the gym, or when you have free time, or maybe you're gaming. Something in the background that works on your subconscious mind, as well as you're actually listening, trying to internalize the material. What was most helpful in my life, and I will always give credit to this man, was Greg Plitt. I was extremely obsessed with his videos, to the point where I had a compilation that was about three hours, and I would listen to it almost every day, over and over and over again, like an absolute fucking nut job. But guess what? I started doing that when I was a teenager in my most impressionable years. It definitely set me up in an almost arrogant, egotistical way to which ended up backfiring at some point <laughs> in terms of getting into trouble with certain people and having um, a massive fucking ego. But beyond that part, the actual lifting itself always believed in myself, always knew from day one, even though I was a fucking twig, that I was gonna get an aesthetic body, that I was gonna be strong. It was Greg Plitt that made me realize my potential. And it's crazy how so many newcomers don't even know who he is. Imagine if he was still alive today. What would he say against the low thinking that's become so prevalent? Man, he would fucking demolish it, I'm sure of that. And really inspire people to keep elevating because that's really what's limiting you. And if you just look at his older content, actually his website is still up, you can subscribe to his membership if you choose to. I did it one time, I downloaded all the videos for myself. It's a way of honoring him and when I go back every couple of months just to look at some of that content, it still ignites a spark after all these years. So I'm just saying that you need to have a mentor or someone who really inspires you. For some, that might even be me. And for those who say that, which I do get those comments on a pretty consistent basis, I'm truly honored. And it's guys like you that keep me going in delivering this type of content and trying to better myself as well, because now it becomes a community. It's no longer just about one individual. So Greg Plitt changed my life in ways that I can't even begin to describe. And beyond that, in terms of upgrading the mindset even further, it was definitely Eric Bugenhagen in 2016. That's when his content was the most raw. Like, some brutal shit. You won't find that in 2021. His older videos were dark. They always had these rants at the end. He would swear like crazy during his sets. The footage isn't there anymore. It was honestly too raw and everyone loved it, but he was the guy that showed me how to go for PRs on a consistent basis. That's when the winning mentality really started to get ingrained in me. You know, I started hyping up during my workouts putting in a lot more effort, broadening my perspective about unconventional lifts and shooting for numbers that I would have never thought were possible for me back in the day. And a lot of which I ended up hitting. So 2016 was a really fun year and I credit that to naturally enhance and changing my mindset. All right, besides that, I'd like to end this video by discussing the placebo and nocebo effect. So 
We have some interesting data on the subject. For one, if you believe you have bad genetics, guess what? That will manifest itself in physical results. We figured this out years ago. Omar Isof actually made a complete video on the topic. You have two groups of guys, tell one of them they have amazing genetics while the others are below average. We literally see the physical results being manifested right after. Which just goes to show that the mindset truly is everything. You are limiting yourself a hundred fucking percent. No questions about it. Just the belief can fuck you up. That's why all these guys with their negative videos trying to black pill you, it's working. Which isn't what you want. Find guys that uplift you because they actually will have the desired results. And in general, the placebo effect has always been a thing. It works when we talk about supplements that don't do shit. It works about certain training methods that may not be optimal. I mean, there's a reason why we have to control for placebo when we talk about effective studies. Isn't that the lesson we should have learned all these years ago? If we know for an absolute fact that placebo and nocebo can occur, why not try to use that in your favor? By, of course, incorporating the strategies I discussed today. So that's one study. The other one is when you give people fake steroids. Guess what? They make better gains. So the idea that you can't train that hard as a natty, what the fuck are you talking about? Sure, it's a different game. You can't handle as much volume. The percentages need to be a little bit different. I mean, it's not one-to-one. -one. No one's going to deny that when we talk about strength training. And obviously, it's easier to gain muscle when you're on that stuff. And you can run programs that aren't quite the best. But in terms of getting better results than what you're currently experiencing, placebo roids seem to be effective. So to me, that indicates something that was lacking within the program. That once you thought you were capable of doing it, I mean, you just did what was needed. It goes back to what Greg Doucette's always saying. Train harder than last time. Honestly... That's probably what's missing in a lot of people. And this further confirms it. And then finally, we have the low testosterone studies. Everyone's obsessed what the number is. But what you'll often find is that once they get tested, if they're below average by a slight amount or they're slightly at it, usually they'll get worse results than the gym right after because now they have induced negative thinking. Whereas if you're clueless about what these T levels are, there's no expectation. You don't give a fuck. You just go in the gym. Okay, I'm normal. I'm whatever. And the results just come as they appear. But once you believe you have a physical limitation, it's manifested. Law of attraction, man. It's like when guys say, oh, I have a thyroid problem. They All of a sudden, they start getting fatter because they're not being accountable anymore. It gives them an excuse. I'm not trying to dismiss those who actually do have that problem. But whenever you're aware that something is slightly off, it leads you in the opposite direction of thinking. So sometimes not knowing can be better, though this is not health advice. So my message is not to not get your testosterone levels checked. Like obviously if there's issues, you wanna get that sorted out, but just realize that this obsession with this number is probably not doing you any favors. And in my case, I've never gotten a testosterone test done. I have no clue, not the slightest where I'm at. I could be anywhere. I don't care. I feel good. All the indicators that I'm in the healthy range seem to be there. But you never know. I could show up and be below average. If I found that out now, so be it. I already got my gains, so it doesn't matter anymore. So look, if you got to get checked, do it. But don't hyper obsess. Because another truth is that when you're in the normal physiological range, it doesn't give you an insane advantage for gaining muscle. So whether you're at 500 or 600, it's not a big deal. It's only when you get past a certain number that, okay, now we can talk about superior results. Normal deviations aren't going to make a physiological difference, but it will affect your mentality. So keep that in mind. With that said, I think I'm done talking. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this topic. I'd love to hear some of your feedback in the comment section regarding mindset. Let's hear it. And I'll talk to you all next time.